First Delir realizing you're using oh, oh, Snapchat. Oh, hold on a second. How, how did it come out? Like, how did they... The uh, boy's mother ended up finding it. Yeah, finding it? What do you mean? It, it, the Snapchat goes away, right? How they... He probably saved it. You can screen record, take screenshots. Wow. You gotta know that that's gonna happen. Wow. Oh my god! <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, let's let's watch this. You rent, and I walked up to the place, and Kim had to evict the guy. And I gave you so much credit because he was about, let's say, 35 years old, pretty muscular. And Kim standing there, and the, the, the sheriff serves the guy for the eviction. I tell you, you haven't evict, evicted somebody. It's pretty interested, interesting. So the guy is coming down the house. He's emptying the property, and he's giving us a stink eye. He goes like, it's Christmas time. I got two kids, you know, but I still didn't pay the rent. And so he's being evicted. And every time he moves the stuff onto the sidewalk, he gives us a stink eye. And I felt for you, Kim. I mean, you know, Kim's just... She's not very muscular. <laughs> She's very attractive, but not muscular. This guy's giving. Wait, felt for the landlord in a story where one of his landlord friends was evicting a father and his children on Christmas Eve. I love landlord content. They should really never stop. They should never stop doing it. There's no better agitprop than this. Like, I this thing. <laughs> I but the thing, this was the funniest thing. You know, Kim says it's worth it's worth the misery. So this guy's giving me a stink eye. It's Christmas time. I think he's got two daughters. He's dragging his Christmas tree out and all this stuff. And he comes up to me and he's still giving me the stink eye. And he says, you know, it's Christmas. And Kim just holds a line. And what am I going to do with my furniture? You know, it's all on the sidewalk out there. And this truck pulls up. And they loaded his furniture onto their truck. <laughs> they thought it was they thought it was rubbish. <laughs> I I, I, Kim and I sat there talking to him. I'm looking over his shoulder, and these guys are, oh, it must be Christmas. And they're throwing all of his furniture and his Christmas tree on their truck. And I said to him, Well, if you keep talking to me, pretty soon you won't have anything to move. <laughs> I mean, dude, that is the oppressive class straight up reveling in the subjugation that they are able to. Uh, enforce others uh, the subjugation that they're able to enforce upon others okay where the oppressor is gloating about the acts of violence that they are inflicting upon a working class person and what I find particularly interesting about it is that like most people don't recognize that this is an act of violence right like this should be I don't know I mean in a normal civilized society I feel like this this gloating about this particular situation is it should be a punishable offense. Engaging in this particular, engaging in this act in and of itself should be a punishable offense. Evictions are, and I know that for most people, it's like impossible to comprehend it this way because we are living under a capitalist dogma. Evictions are violence. It is. Ripping someone from their shelter that they need for survival alongside their children is violence. You are enacting violence upon someone, straight up. You're taking away someone's shelter, you're, you're making them housing insecure, and the only reason why you're doing it is because you want to maximize on your profit. And then you use the police state, the, the state's monopoly of violence, to basically enforce that. And every time we talk about this, everyone always says, well, what about people not paying for months and months and months? What about people not paying for months? And the issue that I have there is like, we should stop. We should move away from looking at housing as an investment vehicle, as a commodity, and move towards seeing housing as a human right. Shelter is a human right. Without shelter, you cannot survive. Without shelter, you cannot thrive. And the people that make a living off of treating housing as not a right, but a, a investment vehicle should d do deserve less rights, honestly. Like they should have certain rights taken away from them. They should have certain privileges taken away from them. If you want to do housing as a as a way to create passive income for yourself, then if someone doesn't pay their rent for a couple months, like sorry that you just took a fat L, you know? The only way that you can uh, the only way that you can engage in like being a landlord like that is if you just sometimes you're going to take an L. An investment and not all investments pan out. Every day I pray for this man to get typhus and get horribly sick and spend one year in the hospital as his bowels rot from his head and he shits out his organs slowly before dying. What the? We are all just one paycheck away from homelessness unless you are Hasanabi. So many people are. But yes, investments are allowed to lose money. Investments should be able to lose money.
But the one kind of investment that we do not allow, the one kind of investment that we never allow to lose money is just housing, like rent. Is an eviction almost like a legal process to take away someone's access to water, but for shelter? Imagine if that was a thing. Yeah, technically it does also take away someone's access to, to water as well. The US. That's the, that's the psych, that's the unfortunate reality. Water bill utilities shut off. That's illegal in California. I don't know if it is in, in other places. You can have your electricity shut off, but you can't have your water shut off. It's literally illegal in the state of California to shut someone's water off. No, it is. The only place where like you can actually, it's illegal to shut your water off unless the only instance where your water can be shut off in the state of California, okay? In the state of California, the only place where your water can be shut off, okay? Stop saying it's legal in my bump, podunk, hick ass, dumbass, hyper capitalist, yee yee, honk, honk, not saying the other word, okay? Ass, stupid, Republican uh, states, okay? I did not say the last letter on the honk, honk. I don't know if that's like gonna get me clapped up. But yes, of course, of course, in horrible places like that, where people have been able to utilize racist dadget prop to put forward some of the worst, most hyper capitalist demons in positions of power, in those states, they can kill you, okay? Guess who they apply that rule to, Chad? There's also selective enforcement and shit. I mean, they apply that rule more towards black people and brown people and shit, but. No, they definitely do that to white trash too. You know what I'm saying? No, they they definitely do that. They definitely do that towards white trash motherfuckers too. Like they don't give a shit. It's about whether you're poor or not, okay? It's about whether you're a worker or not. Dude, that's an anarchist argument, dude. Adults can sign contracts with one another and there should be authorities to enforce those contracts. You can't just take advantage for a one-sided gain. What? Housing is a human right, but you have the right to sign contractual obligations with other citizens and there should be a governing body to support those contracts. You anarchist yeah that's why uh by the way that's not a f anarchist argument you dumb bitch and caps literally based the entire societal foundation off of enforcing contracts what are you talking about libertarians unironically believe just that this is it that is literally a f that is literally a libertarian argument you are making a libertarian an anarcho-capitalist argument the enforcement of contracts that are not signed under duress when we live in a capitalist organization of the economy is is so stupid, okay? Every every contract that you are engaging in, especially one where you are engaging in a contract for shelter, do you think that that's not under duress? What kind of dumb fuck are you, dude? What, what is this? That doesn't, you don't have to be a fucking anarchist to, or, or an ANCAP to recognize that the rent agreement that you're engaging in, in a civilized society would not exist. It just would not. It would not. It's the one issue where I'm just like, dude, it's so bad. It's so bad. Like, I get having your grandparents have, like, a nest egg, okay? But the idea that, like, you as, like, a 30, 40-year-old, like, this is the only way you make money, it's like, you're not. You're, you're just... The only way you can make money is by what? Rent-seeking beha rent seeking behavior? And then you come in here and you immediately start talking about, uh, you know, contract enforcement. Also, how the f*** is that, like... Uh, I can't believe that dude said anarchist. That's an anarchist argument. Like, like the entire... Even though it's reductive, the entire perspective, the entire point of view of anarchy, anarchism, is about the abolition of unjustifiable hierarchies. And then you're talking about upholding the court system because two people have uh, have actually signed a contract. That's so stupid, dude. Tell me you don't understand anarchy. You understand anarchy less than 14-year-old anarchities, dude. He's saying you were making an anarchist argument? No, it is anarcho-capitalist. But anyway. This doesn't have enough homes. This line shows how many months it would take for the current supply of housing to run out. It's a measure of housing supply, and it's been dropping for a decade. And this line shows how housing prices have changed. They've skyrocketed. It's going to piss me year. off. For rental units, the percentage of empty buildings is the lowest it's been in. But if some people can't have their homes taken from them whenever wealthy people want, how will we separate the haves and the have nots? Yeah, I know. I agree. But not durum ne? Three decades, while rent prices keep going up. But here's the thing. Often when new buildings go up in these places, people hate them. It's hard to describe, but you know it when you see it. Gentrification building! Most often, they're talking about new buildings like this. Boxy, modern, multifamily homes. 
I saw one one day that sort of hit me and it was a TikTok that was showing this building in Camden, New Jersey. That's Jerusalem Demzes, a Vox Policy reporter. You know, the comments ranged from a bunch of different things. It was people kind of deriding the building itself, saying that it was causing displacement, saying get ready for a Starbucks to come and pop up. Comments like this are a common narrative. To many, these buildings don't just look bland and artificial. They signal raised rents, displacement, and the complete transformation of a neighborhood to it's a place that's richer and whiter. So th this is 100% true. What the fuck? So are they going to like say that this is actually good though? Like what is this entire video? But in this case, what happened next might surprise you. I started like kind of like going around trying to find the specific location, walking around Google Maps. And eventually I find it and I find the building. I look at the address. I look into property records to figure out what this building was. And not only is it new housing, it's actually new affordable housing. Turns out there's a lot we get wrong about how we see new construction in the U.S. Oh, shit. Moo Dog in the building. Moo Dog in the house. Big, big box fan, dude. They're gonna talk about five plus one, uh, one plus fives. So you literally like you only watch Philip DeFranco, who like America is about to enter into war with Ukraine, with, with, and you only watch the uh, clickbait Twitch streamers. Yeah, and you only watch Vox. Like, what are you, you are such a lib, dude? Holy shit, it's crazy. Watching Vox doesn't make you a lib. Vox is the most lib, and I mean like lib, not in a positive way. I mean like liberal. Not in the way that, like, Republicans think are liberals. I mean, like, liberal. Like, straight up, you know, the poor liberal. Wait, what? You know, people who uphold property more uh, above uh, individual lives. Like, the lives and livelihoods of citizens. Where are you getting this about Vox? Vox? This is literally a video that is defending gentrification building, dude. I mean, I haven't examined the undertones of, like, po of political ideology, but I am interested in, like... Liberalism upholds private property, property that you can generate passive income off of, above the interest, elevates private property above all. The entire civilizations, entire liberal societies have been built around upholding the principles of capitalism and private property, uh, whether that private property concept extends to human beings, i.e. slavery, chattel slavery in the United States of America and its formation, or just straight up enclosures and, and the defense of enclosures in the form of land and landlording. That's the heart of liberalism. The liberalism is built around a political ideology built around the defense of private property, which is exactly what Vox is going to be doing here, I think. Okay, well, I like to learn about buildings, so, you know. That's not where I was going with this. Ludwig made a counter video okay, to so Game Theory's video about you and React content. Oh man, nice. Um, Ludwig, a uh, McDonald's guy? Is he a McDonald's guy? I don't know. Maybe he has a McDonald's uh, uh, ad or something. Whether it's DC, Oakland, or Austin, newer apartment buildings in the US have a distinct look, one that sticks out against older architecture. But these buildings don't look like historic homes for a reason. This building is actually one of the cheapest ways to build an apartment building right now. The design is strategic. According to reporting from Curbed, this kind of architecture is built to fit within restraints like cost, height limits, and safety requirements. It's why many of these structures are one. what's known as five over one or one plus five. Or one plus that five. That means there are several levels of wood framed construction, so which I've lived usually in a, contain a apartments. I know. And I've actually talked about how like, this is not always in bad. City? But that's not bad. Oklahoma City is dog shit. There's nothing going on in Oklahoma Yo, City. Don't hate on OKC, dude. But it's, it's true. It's true. You build all the one plus fives you want, build all the. One plus fives you want when you're building it on a cornfield. But gentrification is not that. Gentrification is is also another form of structural violence in the form of the state coming in and Jesus wiping out Christ, the pre-existing okay. wiping out the pre-existing population. Slow it down. I get it. That's different. And for the record, I don't even mind taking down like single family units or whatever the and building building apartment complexes but those anyway, apartment yes. complexes need to be again sustainable and also uh, affordable and is known as type 5 in the building code that's over one level with a concrete base which and for the record marats uh i've talked about your uh place before i i think it was great awesome for oklahoma city it's perfect so i mean i'm sure they destroyed like some that so that i used to live in deuce i feel like saying is that what it, yeah, what was it like? No, there was the area I was, oh, Bricktown. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The area yeah. I was in was Bricktown, and Deep Deuce was like the neighboring area. 
But like you, you think about it as nice, but like they, they definitely kicked some people out to build those. They were very like, you know, bad neighborhoods. At least they claimed, right? Was it? I don't know. No, that so Deep Deuce apparently has like a history of jazz in like the Midwest or whatever. Okay, so it wasn't a bad neighborhood. It was a black neighborhood. Sure. I mean, it was a black neighborhood that turned into maybe a bad neighborhood. Correct. Okay, I did not know that. Yeah, so, you know, gentrification... That is gentrification. Hey, took, uh, ...took over Oklahoma City in full force uh, in the last, like, 20 oh, years. I was wrong. I guess it wasn't good. Yeah, but you just saw the post-execution uh, area, right? Well, it might... The reason why I thought it was all right is because it's Oklahoma. So I thought Dude, it's, it's, it's not barren land. No, I know. But like there's a there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of, of city to go around in Oklahoma because there's no one like there's no one there. So I just personally assumed that it was just nothing there. And then they built. Dude, it's in the middle of downtown. Come on. I know. But the <laughs> middle of downtown Dude. is nothing still. That downtown is not a real downtown. There's no one there. Yeah. Um. So I appreciate Oklahoma these. Andy here breakdown is Oklahoma gentrification. Okay, that's not good. But we literally said that. Okay, I, now that I found out that it was still displacing you're, you're, people, you're, you hate the gentrification in Oklahoma City. Well, yeah, because that's the point. Because I didn't realize it was gentrification. I thought it was just like building it on a cornfield. That's the whole <laughs> no, point. No, it's not a cornfield. Have you ever been to OKC? Of course, I've been to OKC. He lived in OKC, and I visited him multiple times. And I'm literally wearing a shirt from Oklahoma with the Oklahoma state on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, with the finger. Yeah. Actually, from a church. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I mean, as far as as far as like an engineering perspective, this guy says no Hollywood equals nothing wasteland, dude. You are dude. spoken like a person who's never been to Oklahoma. Okay, well, the entire socialism is when, when no Hollywood. First of, all, <laughs> first of all, no, dude. Oklahoma is literally a nothing wasteland. There are towns with like fifty-two people living. Bro, in there's them. places in like Kansas that you have to like drive four hours to get to. Walmart. But yeah, what are you talking about? Like so Oklahoma like, is literally don't a hate nothing. on OKC, dude. OKC's got like seven WalMarts. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. Oklahoma City is straight up a city that they built by oil barons built specifically so they could bring people like Marat into the city to live there, and it still fails, in my opinion. No, they're doing pretty good, actually. <laughs> so I was in Nebraska real quiet right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oklahoma and Nebraska hate... Well, Nebraska hates Oklahoma. Oklahoma hates, hates Arkansas, Texas. And te Arkansas and Texas. I thought I thought Oklahoma hated Texas. Texas hated Oklahoma. Uh, I, If we're being honest, Texas is like... Oklahoma is just, you know... You're about to dog. get posted to the Oklahoma subreddit again. They really hate you there. <laughs> Oklahoma subreddit? What? They have internet, dude? Dude, they probably got more fiber than you do. You ah, do. Shut up, dude. I know. I just want to <laughs> diss them like I'm a fucking Hollywood elitist that doesn't know. Oh, okay. You know? Like, who cares? They're in Oklahoma. Like, they, they're voiceless. You know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah. One over five. It's cool. Or five over one. It's cool. Just, you know. Which usually contains What they do with the land and how they get the parking, land and what they do with the people that was on the one. land. That's the problem. The light frame wood construction, flat windows, and paneling around the building are all ways to build as affordably as possible. And that means you're able to build more affordable housing. I think a lot of the time people don't understand that um, in order to get affordable housing, the actual components of the building have to be cheap to develop and to construct. The results can be bland. So I, and I agree with her. It's just about how you that structure your business plan and is how an you old one. market it, right? In this book, The Invention of Brownstone Brooklyn, Suleiman Osman writes about the iconic brownstones of Brooklyn, a design that today is widely considered to be deeply so sick, authentic to New York. But in the 19th century, compared to the mostly wooden homes that predated them, critics actually dismissed brownstones as modern and artificial. Oh my god, is this video gonna make an argument about destroying the brownstones and, and building one plus fives on them? Jail. Literally jail, dude. Throw them in jail. Throw the people. Throw? No? Okay. They called them out as products of the mechanical age, poorly built and subject to decay with a dehumanizing. Bro, I don't know what your brother has told you, but that man is a Republican. My brother that I've lived with my entire life. Marat seems like too much of a Republican to be anywhere close to a leftist. My brother that I've, dude, parasocial relationships. I love this, dude. I love, I love getting to a, a degree of like parasocial relationships that where you think like, you know my brother better than me from a five second interaction that you didn't even have, like not even a real interaction. Like that's insane, dude. People need to chill. Not me. Sound familiar? 
comments in a lot of those TikTok videos, they say things like, oh, it looks like mass produced, they look phony. I mean, that's literally the exact same language that was being used in the 1900s to talk about the brownstones. That building we mentioned earlier in Camden, New Jersey, was built using low-income housing tax credits. It has 245 units geared toward seniors and families making less than 60% of the area's median income. It's easy to see why the construction of affordable housing like this is a good thing. But what about the new market rate buildings that service middle and higher income people? They've come to symbolize displacement or the idea that existing residents could be forced involuntarily to move out, often for reasons like rent increases or eviction. Since developers like to build in places where prices are already rising, new buildings tend to correlate with those increased rents and displacement. But a growing number of researchers have tried to find out whether these new buildings are the cause of displacement. They were testing the demand effect, or the idea that the new buildings increase demand for the neighborhood, which in turn cause rent hikes that force people to leave. But the research suggests the opposite, an overwhelming I'm an architect, this is lip shit. It's about building more profitably. Maximizing the land investment is not about affordability. Yeah, for the record, maximizing uh, land is, in the eyes of liberals, the only way to uh, create affordability. That's just, that's the point. That's what liberals believe. So you just said, this is lip shit, and then you described how liberals believe you can maximize affordability by maximizing uh, the usage of the land. Even the luxury condominiums are still built as cheaply as possible. There is no structure that is built expensively on purpose. It's still built cheaply, as cheaply as you can make it. Anyone else want some? I just banned a two month subscriber for the record. Like, I will destroy you. I do not give a I will destroy your family lineage, dude. I will dis I will curse all seven generations of your family. Fucking do some dumb shit in my chat. Supply effect, where increasing the supply of new buildings, even if they are market rate, made housing less scarce and decreased rents and risks of displacement, especially in the areas closest to the new buildings. New housing freed up space within a neighborhood for new residents to move in without taking up existing homes. And it also meant when they moved from their past homes, they freed up housing units in those neighborhoods as well. But here's the thing, less displacement was happening near new construction, but it didn't necessarily mean less gentrification was happening because gentrification and displacement aren't the same thing. While displacement happens to people, gentrification happens to a place. When an However, for one of the top affordable housing developers in the country, a lot of these are billed for government-issued tax credits that banks tend to buy around uh, 0 0.75 on the dollar in exchange for equity. Also, there's prevailing wage rates on almost all of them, which severely impacts costs as well in good ways as people are paid well, especially in California. Mass 2019 paper they briefly showed did not, in fact, show this. Um, so she just said gentrification does not equal displacement and then basically uh, proceeded to describe basically proceeded to describe exactly what, uh, what do you call it? Uh, exactly how gentrification does uh, engage in displacement and then said, no, but like in the normal market, okay, in the normal neoliberal or in the normal liberal understanding of capitalism, what is supposed to happen is the new units are going to open up all the old units because all the people that are making more money are going to want to move into the new units. And then that's going to create a system where the, the older units are available for all the poor people. And because there's more units now, there will be, uh, you know, there'll be more supply for the increased demand. And then also on top of that, that will create a system where like your prices will go down, your housing prices will go down, except that's not what happens. That doesn't happen. Just like when, uh, just like when people say like UBI is going to be a way to just like feed your landlord extra money because landlords just increase without, without any sort of price control mechanism. Landlords will just increase your, uh, increase your, your housing price, your cost of your housing, no matter what, based around like how much you can pay, how much people are willing to pay. Our past homes, they freed up housing units in those neighborhoods as well. But here's the thing, less displacement was happening near new construction, but it didn't necessarily mean less gentrification was happening because gentrification and displacement aren't the same thing. While displacement happens to people, You wanna know why housing, food, at least like some level of housing, some level of food, 
basic necessity coverage, okay, uh, and, and also healthcare are all human rights and should not be considered a privilege. And that like other commodities that you consume, you can use like a market style system. But these commodities, these things that we see as commodities that are necessities for survival should not be considered that way because of yet another concept that they teach you in micro and macroeconomic principles when you take introductory economics courses called inelastic demand, okay? Inelastic demand is the reason why healthcare cannot be a for-profit institution. It cannot be a for-profit industry because no matter what you raise the price of insulin to, People are going to do anything they can to purchase it, okay? Because if you don't have, if you don't have insulin, you die. And the same goes for housing as well, okay? Because no matter how much housing costs, like people are either going to die on the street or they're going to have to find a way to pay it. There's a shelter. It's, nece it's a necessity for survival. Now with food, luckily we don't really do that. Uh, America has been, America, one of the greatest things that America has done is learn from the mistakes of prior uh, previous uh, uh, forms of governance and maybe the Great Depression as well. And it's figured out that as long as you keep, and this is a Maratus theory, by the way, he calls it the bread price theory, okay? Food prices are kept low. Agricultural production is heavily subsidized and centrally controlled, for the record, even though it is market-based. It is like straight communism level uh, uh, controlled by uh, the federal government, okay? But they have realized that as long as the food prices are uh, stable, as long as they are relatively affordable, as long as they're relatively stable and pe pieces, uh, people can, you know, continue eating jalapeno poppers, okay? Then people will not revolt. And that's true. But the really... Not really. It is 100%. Part of the reason why it is impossible, like, part of the reason why you rarely ever see revolutionary sparks in a country like the United States of America is because of, obviously, the wide-scale destruction of, of any sort of labor movement, regular uh, lobbying of the government to, to eviscerate any sort of working-class organizing movement or anything like that. But also on top of that, they kept them well-fed. Every, uh, every single instance of revolutionary action has only happened in the aftermath of of uh, people starving okay if you can eat enough food if you got nuggies dude if you got jalapeno poppers if you actually have food on the table the likelihood that you will revolt the likelihood that you will recognize that you've been over is minimal it's true so america does one thing very well and that's keep food prices stable no matter where you go now now, having said that, having said that, we don't see housing in the same way and we don't see healthcare or the America, like housing and healthcare are two of those inelastic uh, demand sectors that for some reason, the American government can get away with, uh, the American government can get away with keeping the way that they keep it, like not low, uh, not low cost. Part of it is because there's a finite amount of land. We produce an abundance of food. We don't, I mean, we kind of have an abundance of, uh, of of housing as well, but there's only a, a finite amount of land. Part of it is because of zoning constraints, as someone in the chat or someone in the chat also pointed out to. And the other part of it is because, you know, people want to live in these nice neighborhoods, like urban environments where all the jobs are. And those places still have a, a total, like there's a there's a finite amount of, of, of space that you have, okay? With healthcare, it doesn't matter. You could just like die, beg, e-beg on the internet and it's fine. Like, people just don't see it. Because he's used buying homes from lower class families just to tear them down and build this shit. Even if it's affordable housing, typically it's only a few units out of the hundreds. Yeah, that's true. That's another that's another huge problem as well. But once again, I just, I, I consider it disastrous uh, and, and horrible that we refuse to recognize. We refuse to even see inelastic demand, a term that they've, you know, neoclassical e economists recognize, talk about regularly, uh, and refuse to implement that. You refuse to, refuse to... Uh, to use that in any of the conversations we talk about where we're talking about housing or healthcare. Gentrification happens or to food. a place when an area experiences demographic change, typically going from lower income tenants to higher income ones, shown here in the darker green. Over time, demographic shifts in the neighborhood could still occur, not because existing residents were displaced, but for other reasons. Maybe people decided to move to more desirable neighborhoods or some passed away. And the research suggests when that happened. Yeah, this was a this was a fire tweet. Everybody wants to blame BlackRock. No one wants to blame low supply, low mortgage rates, and the enormous demand for starter homes. And residents were more likely to be replaced by richer people, meaning gentrification was happening, but without forced displacement. 
So to reduce both displacement and gentrification, you need more market rate and affordable housing, like that building in New Jersey. Affordable housing, along with policies like rental assistance, preserve income diversity, making sure that those with lower incomes can always live in a particular neighborhood. I love that she said, like, you know, gentrification would not be uh, causing displacement uh, if there was both market rate housing, which is like, you know, the luxury condominiums. OK, let's call it what it is. And also affordable, low income housing sprinkled into it. But that's exactly what's going on. That's literally how they build in New York. That's how they build everywhere. The entire problem is that it's never affordable housing. It's like one an affordable housing unit for 10 luxury housing units that you just uh, hide by saying it's market rate okay what is market rate when the market is completely f and also you say it's not forced displacement well what happens to the old family that's been living in that same apartment what happens to the old lady that's been living in the same apartment for years and years and years okay and then they no longer can afford there's no rent control so they no longer can afford that how uh, apartment now like they don't want to leave but they have to oh well it's not forcible like what, what is it just oh, it's only it's only forcible when you rip the old lady uh out of their houses like is that how is that the only time when it's affordable if there is a scarcity of a product, we know this in every market. When there is not enough of something, the only people who get anything are rich people. And so you have to make sure that there's enough for everyone at every level. Dude, I love this. I love this, dude. This is awesome. It's it's literally like a uh, talking point. It's awesome when your your argument is like the the best way to deal with gentrification without displacement is by making more expensive housing for the rich people to move into the more expensive housing. That's fucking sick. But there's one very big obstacle to building housing for everyone everywhere. Wealthy neighborhoods across the US are really good at blocking new housing developments. Take a look at this map of New Haven, Connecticut compared to the nearby wealthier town of Woodbridge, Connecticut. When we take a look at local zoning laws and where multifamily developments are allowed in these areas, there's virtually no land in Woodbridge zoned for them. Single family zoning laws block the vast majority of apartments or affordable housing in this area. When you have political power concentrated in the hands of very few wealthy homeowners and they say, we're not going to allow housing here, of course, there's going to be an unequal distribution of housing. In 2020, after a four unit multifamily building was proposed in Woodbridge, a group of residents even created these flyers saying, do we want this next door? Pitting single family homes against multifamily buildings. And this kind of conflict Dude, this is straight up this is this is dave Chappelle all over again i feel stupid but i don't really understand the problem in this video um the problem with the video is that they're making gentrification sound good it's like a pro it's like a yimby video that is like off its rails because it refuses when you're talking about gentrification and you refuse to talk about like the actual consequences of gentrification the negative impact of gentrification you know displacement and you totally avoid displacement the, the displacement counter argument and hyper focus on you know uh, a, a delusional liberal theory of like supply and demand economics that will uh, uh that will create a system where the the market will behave in the way that it's supposed to in the way that you read it in books and that um, as long as, you know, as long as there's new housing available, then magically the housing prices will decrease. It's not true. That's just not, that's never happened. That's never happened. You're a hater, dude. But it's not, but it has not happened. Why has it not happened then? When will it happen? One day, I think. Literally said there needs to be enough housing for everyone in every income level in a given area. Yeah, except we already have expensive housing units we already have enough luxury condominiums the problem is we never actually and she's justifying that the problem is we never actually build affordable housing units like we don't it's always market rate it's always market rate it's always market rate and she's also saying that you have to have uh expensive market rate housing so that rich people move into the expensive market rate housing and move out of those other uh previous older uh, apartments that will then be given to the people that uh be given to the people that need the that uh older uh apartment complexes except when new market rate housing comes into town and by the way market rate changes 
it's constantly going up. When when new luxury high-rise condominiums get built, half of them don't even get filled ever because it's an investment vehicle for foreign investment and just like wealthy uh, investors regardless, okay? And then the other half that does get filled, let's say those people actually left their old apartments, but those old apartments are no longer at the same price point that they were at. Those old apartments are now, the, the prices of those old apartments are now increased as well because new market rate housing has made the neighborhood more expensive, has made the neighborhood a, a better neighborhood to live in. So now the landlord that sees that will then turn around and increase the prices of the rental property that the older person left. It's basically a liberal way of saying trickle down housing, a concept that has never worked and a concept that has not, it has not panned out at all. Okay. And, and she's just basically, they're basically saying like, oh no, it, it will work though. Like it, it hasn't yet, but it will, it will work. Dude, I feel like you're just, your takes on the Vox are very aggressive. Get closer to the microphone if you're going to talk shit. I said your takes on Vox are very malicious. Malicious? He said aggressive first. Now he's like switching up on me. I am, yeah. And he's saying malicious, aggressive, malicious. What's aggressive and malicious is trying to justify a concept that has historically never worked out in the form of trickle down economics, but planted into the housing market to I, justify I, I feel like you gentrifying took a lesson about people. architecture and like house construction styles, and you like took it to a whole other level. I mean, I don't give a about like the way these houses look let's be real i just i don't care about that shit at all i, I, I don't i don't disagree with you about gentrification but again this is just a tool right it's a method it's not necessarily the way you build a house doesn't necessarily you know dictate how you price people out just saying like don't don't hate on the gentrification buildings how would i not hate on the gentrification buildings like of course i'm gonna hate on the gentrification buildings because it creates displacement do you like seeing homeless people ever? is uh, it fun that's a trick question i can't answer that what is it, is it is it sick is it dope because like that's what happens the number one reason for why people are are housing insecure so here's the difference is because they're they're play they're they're i'm displayed. down to build new buildings but i'm like hey we should build like cheap ones too for like people who, who are you know unable to afford the more expensive yeah ones. but like every new building project is actually expensive market rate luxury condominiums yeah and the trick great. to get around the zoning uh the up zoning restrictions bro we watched is, the same video together okay i, I know that, but that's about. not from this video what i'm saying is just from reality as well the trick to get around that is by saying oh yeah we'll we'll put like some affordable units in this building like 20 miles away yeah <laughs> exactly a lot exactly and we'll then just zone it for and you're not and you're not doing that you're not actually building affordable units we never build affordable units that's the problem not just structural or engineering difference in the buildings a different utilization of the land one that excludes the working class fabian simplica says bring me on the stream i can stem lord him master's degree to master's degree <laughs> my degree means nothing dude in this situation yeah happens everywhere from woodbridge to soho to san francisco if speculators are going to buy up 10 million in real estate, isn't it better if it's half of one floor of a skyscraper than a whole neighborhood street? Okay. Uh, I don't know about that one, dude. Okay. I think you took a couple of stretches there. That's the, the issue is that's the argument that they use. And I say no to both. If you're going to build a skyscraper, you better make sure that a gigantic chunk of that skyscraper is affordable housing units. I feel like it's kind of like the argument how... Um, a couple of years ago, like the whole like Oscar so white situation where they're like, well, you know, only 13% of the population is black. So just not making that many movies. Like, I feel like it's kind of like that where you're just like expecting people to, you know, oh, disproportionately be able to afford, you know, housing. Where yeah. And, and we can't. And that's precisely why there are so many homeless people in places like California, because there is a finite amount of land here. And adequate city planning needs to factor that in. Adequate city What's planning that, like would... like equality versus equity? I mean, the difference between equality and equity is stupid because we don't have equality of opportunity. Equity is is supposed to be the, the equality of outcome. Um, versus when Americans talk about equality, they're talking about equality of opportunity. Except we don't have... Oh, five still. Ah! Okay, this is what happens when you eat at your desk. You get flies. Anyway, back to the video. There are enough houses in LA to have zero homeless? Okay. That's not true either. Sure, yeah. Did you rent all of them and give them out for free? Like, that's not that's not true either. Look, there is I, I say that too all the time. Okay. There are enough there are enough housing units available in like even the Bay Area to house the entire homeless population in California. Okay. Except where are those houses? Like, and you can't really do that either. 
I, I know that uh, I know that reappropriating the available vacant homes to ensure that people are living in, in places uh, uh, to ensure that homeless people are be uh, homeless people are able to be housed is one of the many measures that you need to do. But another thing that people don't realize, another thing that people don't realize is that like some of those vacant units are in bump nowhere there are a lot of places where they are super far in the from the heart of the city where a lot of the homeless people are priced out of the housing market you know what i mean so there's still um there's still a, a gigantic problem with that as well like i'm not saying that there isn't a finite supply of land it, it, there is it's true do you support making more public housing absolutely i am 100 an advocate for social housing i'm 100 an advocate for uh first of all immediately converting every motel Every single motel that has been bankrupt, immediately convert them into permanent housing, not shelters, permanent housing for the homeless population. I'm also an advocate for uh, building affordable housing units or like mixed income housing units are definitely important. But the unfortunate reality is people say mixed income housing and then use that as an opportunity to do development projects that are market rate housing with a little bit of affordable housing units sprinkled into it. Oftentimes, as Marat pointed out correctly, like in New York, for example, in a totally separate part of the uh, in a totally separate part of the city. OK, so when people say mixed housing, what they also need to focus on is like, how how are we mixing the housing? What are we mixing? In some places, activists have found a way to use the language of gentrification against changing zoning laws. For example, in response to a proposed California bill pushing for more housing near areas with transit, including a specific percentage of affordable housing, a group called Livable California said building more housing would add jet fuel to a gentrification crisis. They see the power of this rhetoric and they are using it as a tool to muddle the debate, to make it seem like building new housing is actually going to create displacement when we know what creates displacement is not building new housing. That's what's so kind of dangerous about this entire debate. We have gotten to a place where the actual policy solution is seen as part of the problem. This guy go. said, this guy said, yeah, you advocate for those things, but what are you actually doing? Have you bought a motel and converted to homeless housing yet? He's obviously joking. Oh, no, he's not joking. These people literally think that this is like, no, bro. These people literally think that that's like what I have the capabilities of doing. Like they think I can do this. Like I can combat that I can combat real estate developers or the hotel industry that also partially utilizes like the land ownership that they have as a another secondary way of engaging in the speculative market and making more money as well which is precisely why they would rather not convert any motels into uh, uh permanent housing yeah i don't know about this whole motel conversion business like i've no, i haven't heard that one it's a very successful uh, program that's worked in certain parts of california the issue is that again both uh both developers don't want that and also uh the the hotel industry doesn't want that either what about the market for motels like the con con motel consumers i'm just there's still plenty of motels we're talking about the ones that went bankrupt yeah, it's called Project Room Key, by the way, the, what I was referencing. Architectural designer here who's familiar with SB9, we are short over 700,000 homes that are affordable to very low-income and low-income LA County. Converting motels a band-aid fix, not solving the root cause? Yes, yes, the root cause is always going to be using housing as a commodity, okay? That is the root cause. That's precisely why there are people that are homeless. Says the guy who just bought a house. Yeah, of course. I bought a singular home or myself and you and my family okay oh my lord dude shut the f up okay um luckily even chatters know that you're here every day so you know there's that i am the perfect house purchaser i'm not buying this house to uh, rent it out i'm not buying this house as a investment vehicle i'm buying this house because it's but shelter just think over about my how head. money we can make if we airbnb it that's what i mean exactly and that's why a lot of people do that a lot of people do buy houses to do specifically that Product of Euclidean zoning and redlining in a way since they can't build multifamily homes and single family zones. So low income families are being pushed out for gentrification in areas that allow for the top of the hour to be announced 20 minutes late. And then he continues his multifamily buildings. We need to rethink our zoning laws. I just, I discuss, I, I am disgusted. They used to just put the top of the hour ad bait in the end of the f bait so I could see it and then I would avoid They're it. They're too right? smart, dude. I would read it quickly and I would avoid it. And they've gotten better. They've gotten smarter. And now they're literally 
using do you, do you think these are like twitch operatives trying to make sure that you hit the top of the hour every hour i don't know what the fuck no they're just community members that love innovating and creating new ways to bait the streamer because it's 24 minutes can you give us some material hour. the gaslight slash stunlock marat like how he's driving a glorified Volkswagen or something first of all i'm fully aware that i'm driving a glorified Volkswagen. i'm all about it the reason i actually got that car was because of the Touareg. so you know owned who fucking owned dude too powerful for you you can't do it you can't stun lock them unless you say something like i don't know talk shit about firefighters or something or or um i don't know talk shit about like i didn't realize you're anti-hero dude wait I, I wait actually see see he's starting already dude that's the whole point you're not supposed in, in order to stun like someone you're not going to advocate for things you actually believe in weirdo you're supposed to advocate for things you don't believe in that's like supposed to frustrate and trigger the person and that's how you win that's how you win the prize right just like uh for example you're supposed to say something like, oh, some some space project is actually bullshit. Just tell them, tell them that uh, whatever kind of any dime that we're spending on space is actually a waste because it should be used to, you know, pay for health care. I mean, I'm not anti healthcare spending, but I do want to point out that when you microwaved your burrito earlier, that was because of space. I did not microwave a burrito, but you know, I, I see what you're saying. See, you, no, you it's, know, it's working. We use oh, Velcro wow. on your, you know. Oh uh, wow! Shoes. So so wow! That's because of space. Oh, there's no way to get technological achievements without sending people to space. Oh, okay. There's many ways to get technological. Achievements. I'm not even space against space travel. Room. I'm not even against space travel, but I think we should fix our. We should clean up our rooms before we engage in in the final frontier. Owned. <laughs> He's white knuckling right now, Chad. Nope, I'm good. Anyway, it's top of the hour. Here's the six second ad break. It's if not top of the hour. Okay, it's middle of the hour. It's bottom of the hour. If you want a six second ad break, uh, if you want to watch it, then that's great. If you don't, if you want a six second ad break, yeah, well, subscribe. it's coming for you. If you don't want to watch it though, uh, then all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for five dollars. You can do that for free with a Twitch Prime. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, that. What the? Uh, How do you feel about Disney adults, dude? Very weird. All right, here's the woman ad break now. Isn't bottom of the hour technically the same as top of the hour? Shut up. I mean, if you're thinking about like an analog clock, I, yeah, I could see the argument. Most firefighters are pseudo cops in their reactionary thinking. They've co opted the thin blue line term and rebranded the thin red line. Honestly, most firefighters are huge Joe Rog Rogan loving douches. You're not necessarily wrong. I mean, he's going to agree the, with that. You're not necessarily wrong, but the problem there is firefighting inherently is about helping the community. Whereas policing or, is not. It's more about regulating the community, right? No, I'm, I'm proud of you. No, dude, I'm not. No, I'm not, I'm not about your anti cop right now. I five me right now. High five me right. Can't help it. He doesn't want to say any anti cop stuff, but like, that was. Dude, I already have enough hardship at work. I'm okay, that was an appropriate analysis. Right you did a good job. You did a good job. True. Why fight the fires? Why not make love to them? <laughs> you know how fire departments originally began, right? What, private? Uh, yeah, private fire uh, private brigades. Private insurance companies. Yeah, exactly. Got to go back to that, boys. Yeah, I agree. So we're gonna take a your look chat, here. Your friends? I've heard some. I don't consider chat individually as is individual human beings, Just but one my organism. community, my community is one big organism. I do absolutely. I have a negative and bad parasocial relationship with my chat. <laughs> Chat's about to like form a thing about like I'm not your friend. Like come to life, Matrix style. No, literally. I mean, it's not healthy. I recognize that it's not healthy. I get, like, upset. You know this. I get upset and sad when I can't stream. Yeah, it's weird. Like, he talks to you guys more than he talks to his own family, which is... Okay, really stop. Sad. Okay, you don't have to f own me like that, okay? Backs over his feelings, bro. See, chat's saying, we are not your friend now. You did this. I want everyone in chat to individually tell you that you're not their friend. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>